Beer Seekers, I'm Nick. Over the last few weeks, the Add-in Board partners have been releasing their own custom versions of the Radiant RX 5700 XTs out into the wild. Gigabyte was the first to send over their card, so yeah, we've got other ones coming too, so don't worry. So let's keep this video short and sweet and see how the Gigabyte RX 5700 XT Gaming OC stacks up against the reference version in our regular set of gaming benchmarks. Let's do a benchmarking thing. It's been a little while. Let's talk about how we're testing this. We're using our permanent GPU test system which is running the Gigabyte Z370 Aorus Ultra Gaming with an i7-8700K and 16 gigs of XPG Gamex D30 at 3200MHz. We included some other cards we've tested recently to give the 5700XT Gaming OZ results a little bit of context. Now we don't include 1% highs or lows with these tests because for us it would just introduce a whole lot of extra testing and I personally feel that getting an average frame rate gives you a good indication of expected performance. We use the benchmarks we do because they're consistent and have repeatable testing, whereas some other tests have way too many variables and they're just not accurate. The tests that we use give you a good indication of what to expect. Not to mention, we don't have a hundred staff to run these tests all day. We use three different benchmarks, all that use the GPU in different ways to see what the performance looks like in different situations. Let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This benchmark is built right into the game and it gives you a good indication of how this GPU will perform on your system. For the 1080p test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 133 frames per second. For the 1440p test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 92 frames per second. For the 4K test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 51 frames per second. I'm guessing you're going to pick up on uh, the pattern from these tests and you know how this stacks up against the reference card already. So let's move on to Unigen Superposition. For the Superposition test, we performed three tests in total. We used the 4K Optimized preset, the 1080p Extreme preset, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur disabled. For the 1440p custom test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 115 frames per second. For the 4K optimized test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 54 frames per second. For the 1080p Extreme test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC get an average score of 39 frames per second. The last batch of tests is with the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool. This is an updated version of the tool with quite a few optimizations to make this a far more accurate benchmarking tool. For the 1080p test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC render a total amount of 10,217 frames. For the 1440p test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC render a total amount of 7,329 frames. For the 4K test, we saw the 5700 XT Gaming OC render a total amount of 4,029 frames. Based on those results, the 5700 XT Gaming OC at stock settings is looking to be on par with the reference card within that margin of error. Because the cooler is a fair bit beefier than the reference card, we did a little bit of mild overclocking without messing with things like power play tables or ronda vaulting. We basically set it to the limits where afterburner would allow us cranking the core up to around 2150 MHz, the memory clock up to 950 MHz, and the power limit all the way up. Let's see what happened. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, we gained around three or four more frames on average with the overclock, which is not that much. In Unigen Superposition, we gained around five or six more frames on average with the overclock.
and in the Final Fantasy 15 benchmarking tool we gained around 1-2% to more performance with the overclock, which is not a lot and it's kind of inside of that margin of error anyway. If you did some more extensive overclocking by modifying the registry to unlock the power play tables, you could probably push it a lot further, but for most people experimenting with something like Afterburner and not getting into undervolting the card, I think the gains are okay. What you're paying for with the AIB cards is mainly better cooling and far quieter cards. On average in our climate controlled office, which is set to 18 degrees, we observed the 5700 XT gaming OC hit around 58 degrees with all the benchmarks on stock clocks, and it was creeping up to around 64 degrees when overclocked. Both of those results were with the automatic fan curve and the fan never exceeding about 30% fan speed anyway. Not to mention that the Gigabyte card is almost inaudible when we were running all the tests. One thing you'll probably notice as well with this card is it's got virtually the same cooler and backplate setup as the rest of Gigabyte's other gaming OC cards that they've released in probably the last 12 months or so. And side by side, this card is almost identical to the 2070 Super Gaming OC. Speaking about the cooler, the reference card isn't as loud as everyone says it is, even on the open air test bench, but yeah, Having a near silent card that runs cooler, I think it justifies the extra pricing on the card just on its own. This isn't just about the Gigabyte card though. This goes for all the partner cards with better cooling. Let's hope the price has come down a little bit just before Christmas. I think the partner cards are a little bit too expensive, just a little bit. So yeah, let us know what your thoughts are on the AIB cards. I'm curious to know what you guys have to say. I literally have not watched any other reviewers content on any AIB cards because we've just been too busy and there's just not enough hours in the day. And personally, overclocking GPUs for daily use can be pretty futile and it, it might not be worth the games with, with some GPUs. You don't have to agree with me, but yeah, I just feel like some GPUs just don't have that thermal headroom or they're just not great overclockers. The Gigabyte Radeon 5700 XTOC is going for around 420 US dollars, around 769 Australian dollars, and there are links in the description if you want to grab one of these cards for yourself. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. If you like this video, you know what to do and tell us what you hated about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. And we don't usually do overclocking in these kind of videos because they just take a lot of extra time, but I was I was more curious than anything, considering the name of the card is the Gaming OC and the stock clocks were the same as the reference card, but cranking them up only had really minor improvements. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see what happens if we get a water block for these cards and see if we can push a little bit further. Who knows? Thanks for watching. <laughs>